Welcome back to our program, Hollywood Structured. As some of you already know, our program is designed to help the young people who wish to enter the entertainment field. May it be music, nightclub work, theater, television, or film. It is also designed to help the parents and the educators of those young people to make them understand their wants and their needs and the pitfalls and the traps they may fall into unless thoroughly acquainted with the inner workings of Hollywood. Today, as our special guest, we have a gentleman who never saw too many movies when he was a child, and the movies that he saw were silent, but he was fascinated by them. However, at the age of 10, he made a couple of very important discoveries that took away his life. He was playing with some friends in their parlor, and there was an upright player piano in which you put a roll and it would play the latest tune. He did not know that if the roll were not there, you could play the piano. One day, rolls were not there, he tried them, and he played, he was fascinated by them, by the piano and the sound. And his second discovery was his father took him to his first movie with sound, it was called The Crusade. And he was fascinated by the sound of the music. He always listened to the radio at home. And at the end of the movie, he asked his father if he could go behind the screen to see the orchestra. And his father said, the orchestra is in the film. It is not behind the screen. Well, right there and then, this gentleman decided, I'm going to write music for films. When? How? He didn't know. But I guess he was right because he has won up till now 20 Grammy Awards and four Academy Awards for music. His name is Henry Mancini. Hello, Hello Henry. Ma How are you? <laughs> Thank you for being on our show. Usually at <clears throat> this time of the program, I teach or lecture to the young people out there about dreams and about responsibility, about training and patience and perseverance. But after reading your book, and I suggest you read it, did they mention the music? I became fascinated because I realized that your life and your struggle through the years could illustrate to perfection what I try to convey every week, which is that it takes a long time to become a star overnight. <laughs> so today I'm not going to lecture, I'm not going to teach. I'm going to do it through you and your life. My first question is, I understand that the town in which you were born made the Guinness Book of Record? Uh, no. Uh, uh, the town I was born would make the Guinness Book of Records for other reasons. It was Cleveland, Ohio. But the, the town you're talking about is uh, in Pennsylvania called West Aliquippa. And it made, not the Guinness, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, that's what it made, yes. It's the only town in the world that they could find that had one way in and one way out. Was it a tunnel or something? <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> it was under the railroad tracks. Some people live across them. I live under them. You know? I see. Uh, at the time, the, the town was segregated, I believe, right? Uh, n not really, no. Uh, not on purpose, let me put it that way. Uh, it was a, f a strange town in that I'd never seen any uh, like this before. It had like plan, plan 6, plan 12, plan 11. It, it sounds strange to talk about it like this. And uh, like we were in West Aliquippa, which was another part of it. And it was uh, almost all Italian, almost 100% Italian. And then we had other places that were almost, uh, that were 100% black, you know. So you are really <coughs> first generation American. Yes. Mm -hmm. Your dad was Italian? My dad was born in, uh, in Abruzzi, uh, way up in the mountains there. And he, uh, he left when he was 15. I can't imagine anybody making that trip, 
You know the, mount yes. uh, the mountains of Italy are like being on the moon. And uh, he made that trip and uh, finally ended up in, uh, at Ellis Island, just like many, many, many other people yes. at the time. My mother did too, but she, didn't, she was a bit more or less of a baby when she came over. I see. Now, um, you played music when you were young, when you were in school? I started when I was eight. When I was eight years old, uh, my dad, who was, we've ended up in this town in Pennsylvania, and uh, he played, he was an amateur flute player, amateur musician, and in addition to making his living in, in, the, in the steel mill, that's where he worked. And he gave me the, uh, gave me a piccolo, you know, anybody that plays flute also plays piccolo, which mm -hmm. is a s small one, and I was just a little kid. And uh, I started on the on the piccolo, and then later gravitated. Gravitated. Where'd That's that, a good Where'd one. that come from? <laughs> later took up uh, piano, and then after that, at about thirteen or fourteen, I started to arrange music, not knowing what I was doing at all. Now, what do you mean by <laughs> arrange music at fourteen? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean by me? <laughs> well. I had been listening, in addition to playing flute and piccolo in the bands in the school, uh, and, and then I started becoming, that was all classical oriented, you know. I became interested in, uh, through the radio, because all the big bands were on at that time, became interested in uh, popular music, and at that time the big bands were starting to really uh, take over. Miller, Dorsey, Shaw, that whole, the whole swing band era, plus a lot of the black bands. Uh, Fletcher Henderson, Basie, Ellington, all of these people. That was their heyday. It was uh, not in the beginning. It, it was just the beginning of that whole thing. And I became interested in what they were doing, what they were playing. And to this day, I can't remember why, why I decided to, to write, to write music. I don't, I don't know. If you ask me, I, it just, you know, when you're a kid, uh, you, you kind of, I mentioned in the book having tunnel vision. You know, where you just, you get your eye on something mm -hmm. and uh, nothing else matters. And that's what happened. I, I just got completely taken over by, by music and by, uh, by these bands. Now, did your father approve of you uh, not finishing school? I mean, you finished high school. Oh, I finished correct? high school, yeah. Yes, but not going to college or anything like that? No, he didn't approve of that at all, no. He, he even after, after... Uh, success. My mother was gone before that, uh, but my dad was around to see all of the, mm -hmm. uh, the Oscars and stuff like that. And even after, I think even the night that I won my, the two Oscars, I think he, he said, you know, you better, you better go back to school, kid. <laughs> <laughs> he, never, he never had any faith in the American dream. <laughs> <laughs> 